everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Vulcan build. This is part 10 now and we're uh, moving forward. Uh, today is Monday the 19th of July 2021 and it's like 30 degrees again so we can't do any painting and it's too hot to work in the garage and I'm just basically looking for something to do. I can stay in sort of just be warm um, rather than boiling my tits off. So anyway, um, Started work on the undercarriage, got some Mr. Surfacer now in the seams around the sides, um, so that's all good. Let that go off, probably sand it down and put another application on. I thought I may as well go on and get these wheels together because we've got the main undercarriage wheels here, inners and outers, and I've done four of them here. And when they're sanded up, they look really, really nice on there. They they do look very uh, Vulcanish, you could say. They look very, very nice indeed. So um. The way to do these, for the newbies out there, is get them off the sprues and then glue them together. You can see here we've got the, the inners and the outers being glued together. So the thing to do is do that and then what you can do is sand them together as a pair to remove the seam. And that way you don't end up with having one wheel bigger than the other or one wheel, you know, on a different... Uh, diameter or whatever so you end up with the wheels of like you know like this or whatever if you sand them together you will get a much better look to them okay so there we go I'm looking at the screen on the computer this is with the new camera by the way um, this is the first actual modeling video I'm doing with it and it looks a little dark and I don't know why that's a little darker again there we go. maybe if I turn this other light on here Maybe a bit brighter, but uh, it's certainly okay for the close-up, isn't it? So I do need to get some better lighting, I think. So anyway, um, doing that, so and then go around with the sponge and just clean them up. So again, what we're doing is 45 degrees, <clears throat> gently scraping over, scraping over with a, um, or sanding over, should I say, with a fairly coarse stick. This is a 220 grit. And just remove the seam line from the middle of the tyres, like so. And if you want to, you can add a flat spot and then go over them with a sponge in the straight direction and that will put the sort of roundness back onto the tyre again in case you put any flat spots on there with your sanding stick. <laughs> Just blow it off. And there you can see the seams are all gone. I'll lay it down on my finger there. You'll see the seams are all gone. And it will all look lovely when it's painted. Okay, so I'll get on and get the others done. Uh, the other thing I want to say is this video may be a bit jerky and a bit bitty because I don't have the remote for the camera yet, so I have to physically touch the camera to turn it on and off. So um, I'll be back in a minute with something else. Right, so I've played with some of the camera settings now and I think the picture looks a little bit better. Anyway, um, moving swiftly along, um, I've put some more Mr. Surface. That's the fourth lot now in that fin. And it's still not... <laughs> Still not going to be enough, I don't think. Um, wheels and tires are all sanded down. Undercarriage is all done. The main undercarriage legs, they suggest you put these in afterwards, but I want to deal with this seam, and I have had a look, and you can actually get this in. You can hook hook this in, okay, and then push it forward, and these legs will just flex into position like so and then you can get it to go together okay like that there you are so it will go together with it in one piece this you've got on here you've got a tab here that goes into a slot in here and it really is very very loose now I'm thinking that maybe okay I'm just looking yeah those undercarriage doors that go in there they also go in that slot so basically you're packing it all in there so probably best idea here is to not put the gear in, not put the door in first, put the gear in, leave it all loose, and then you can pull this back, okay, get the door in, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But um, I certainly didn't want to be adding, as you can see, you can get this out of here. I didn't want to be adding that part in and having this seam all after it's painted nicely and everything. So I wanted that to go in together. Uh, with the nose gear, I think we'll do the same. Um, probably glue that on. Although actually, we'll be okay because it's a it's a hydraulic ram, so that's that's going to be fine. Um, the one thing I have noticed, I discussed before, and Dave 
um, sent me an email and pointed this out and he's made a very good point. This part here, G32 and G33, um, if you look it's a double arm. Okay, you can see that there, it's a double arm. Well there's a, a square arm and then below it there's a, a round, like a round, looks like a cylinder. That cylinder is actually a locking bar. So if you're building your model as on the ground, Bombay is open, <clears throat> ready for action, ready to go, then it wouldn't have that locking bar in there. If you're doing it in maintenance and it's stowed or whatever, it would have it there. So that locking bar there, the lower one needs to be removed. The upper one is square. Where's my cutter's got there? The upper one is square. And that is the correct one, but the lower one needs to be removed. And if you want to question what I'm saying, actually, maybe the lower one's got to stay, maybe the upper one's got to be removed. I'll just do double check on that. Okay, yeah, so in my opinion, it is the lower one needs to be removed. Um, just looking at images, I found some images from Doughty's on, the, on Google. Uh, there are also some video, um, Vulcan to the Sky videos, where they're showing the undercarriage in operation, and you can clearly see in one of those shots that it's not there when the undercarriage is actually in operation. So obviously it's just, it's the same as HK models did with their Lancaster. They put the maintenance support in there and that uh, they shouldn't have. So that's going to go in there like a so. So we're going to put that in there and then that's going to drop into there just like that. Okay. Now I'm only going to glue one end of this because I need that to flex to be able to get it out. So I think what I'll do, <coughs> excuse me, I think I'll glue the smaller end because I think that one's going to be more visible and then when we pull that out that will come out with it. Okay so that can just stay like that. In fact we may be able to get it in without pulling it apart. Hmm. So the one, the, the problem we have here is this end of the undercarriage leg. I've glued the wrong side in there, haven't I? Yes. Stupid me. I thought they were um, the same on both sides, but they're not. So this big square lump here goes in that side. Let me get that changed. Okay, so just to, I've changed them over now, just dab a glue on there, pull them apart, put them back together again. So when you're building yours, remember, you look at them and you think, oh, they're symmetrical. But when you look at them actually again, you can see they've got this square lump on one side, which coincides with that uh, ram we put in earlier when we built the um, gear bays up. So there we go. So this side is this side. Okay, and I've just worked out a great way to get these in with it all assembled. So you don't have to have glue joints everywhere and I have glued those links in. Just to explain this here is actually a locking link so this here scissors like this so this actually goes up and then the um, the undercarriage closes or goes up that way sorry. This here scissors this actually collapses back in at this point and allows the gear to fold up. This arm is actually the locking link that holds that arm out and then it's retracted the cylinder below it is, is something that goes in. So there we go. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. So we, we can put these gear in. We can put this gear in quite easily um, just by coming along and what we do is hook, hook that into there. Okay, and then we can move the gear down, pull it back and then we can get it all in together, he says, as one. Just give it a little pull up into that slot. It will go in. I did this just now off camera and it went perfectly. But it will go into that slot, I can assure you. Okay, if it won't go, what I'm going to do, push that forward, pivot it up and then lift it out. What I'm going to do is just trim the corner of that tab off. So now what I can do is push that in, get it down in like that, bring it back, lift it up and then pivot it in and then put that down in there. Just like so, so everything goes together as one. 
there we are. So it will go with everything assembled. So pull it out, twist it out, push it down, lift it up and out. So once again, come in on an angle like this, down like this, twist it, push it down, pull it back, lift it up on top so that lug down there sits on top of that ram and then pull that back and you're in. Job done. And that will save you having to faff about with glue joints and everything after your undercarriage legs are painted. And it will make it look a lot better. So I'm just going to square that up there. Just square that one up there. There we are. It's all very flexible so it doesn't need to be perfectly squared up. But um, there we go. So that's that bit. That's those bits cut off. And I'm now going to have a look at the front. So, basically, um, nose gear is supposed to be assembled before you put it in. So that's what we're going to do. So we've got the parts here all cleaned up. So we've got the actual nose gear itself. And then we've got this part G2. And then we've got this part here, G7, which is symmetrical by the look of... No, it's slightly deeper on the bottom side. So when you look at it close up, see it's slightly offset so that the offset goes downwards not that I think it's going to matter very much so we'll put a drop of extra thin in there it's not very clear that but we'll see if it needs to be turned over we'll turn it over I mean it is it is definitely not symmetrical so we'll just leave that semi glued and I've got this part here this is a, a, a ram an actuator whatever that's a nice snug fit in there. And that's part number five. So that's going to go in like that. Okay. And then this one, this is part G19. And this is going to come along. And it's going to go into there. Onto the end of that part. Which kind of looks like it's a bit too high. So maybe we'll take it out, turn it over. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. And then that is going to attach to there and there. And then that hydraulic ram needs to come back. It's showing that as fitting on there, but I don't think it's good on there at all. There's, there's no, there's no obvious location or anything for it. It looks like it's saying to glue that to that. Well, that, that's not the case. Um, I think the best thing to do is get it in the nose gear. <coughs> And, uh, and get this all sorted out. So let's get some proper glue on everything. Get that to go in properly in there. And then let's have a look at the nose gear bay. Let's get these out of the way so we don't break them. And then this nose gear is going to go down in here like so. Yes, we can see that leg needs to be moved over more. should all give it a twist, drop it down in. Drop it 
Put all that in those holes and then, oh dear. And then the main leg should slot onto that slot on the back of there, which is very tight. Let's try and twist it. So it's very tight on that leg. So this will open the slot out a bit. Just like so. And then we can drop this down in. Just like that. <coughs> and push that gear onto that tab. It really does not want to go on there. There we go. Yeah, it's actually bending. You can see down in there, it's actually bending that, that single rod, it's bending it. I don't know if it's gone into the hole or not. Obviously it hasn't because it's sliding around. God, this is awful. This is terrible. Awful designing. So we've got to make sure that that single actuator goes into a hole in the bottom of there. And then the actual undercarriage itself will slide onto that tab on the back, which doesn't fit. Oh, God. Maybe the tab's too wide. Let's just cut a little bit off of the tab. Just like so. Take this off the other side so we can keep it symmetrical. And then try again. Hopefully you only have to do this once on yours. There we go. So that tab is a little bit too fat and it's a little bit too wide. It looks like it might be a little bit too long as well. Let's see if we can get a pair of tweezers in there and squeeze it on. There we are. So that's everything gone together. So you've got that single actuator. Try and get this so you can see what it is I'm doing. You've got this single actuator in here. I can't get on it. There's a single actuator in there which is part G5 and that has to go into a hole on its own in the top of the gear bay. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for that all to cure now while it's in there. But um, that is very, very fiddly and all springy and there. Not sort of click click at all, it's all just sort of and then it goes in. So um, there we go, we can, what we can do then is put these in. So we're going to slide that over. I haven't done that one yet, have I? I'm going to take a corner off of there, which is just going to make put it together a lot easier. So we're going to slot that one down in, and then twist it, let it drop down, bring that one back, and then we can bring that up, swivel it around, Put that up on top of that lamp. And swivel it round. I don't think I've taken enough off that corner. Making life a little bit awkward for myself, but it's better than trying to deal with all those seams after the undercarriage is glued in. So put it in like that, twist it, drop it down in, pull it back so that those legs go underneath those corners, pull it back and then we can come up 
on top of that lug on the side and then swing it around, get it into the groove and swing it around just like so, like that and then those legs will pop into those holes in the gear bay roof theoretically there we go so they're in and then this one we're going to do the same doing this on camera is really awkward drop that in drop it down bring it up sit that ledge up on there swing it around come on Swing it around, drop those legs in the pegs in the holes in the roof, and if it all stays together, we should be able for the first time be able to stand our Vulcan on its undercarriage, and there we go. And it's not a tail sitter. So there we are. Okay, so as we discussed previously, with the exhausts, you get the 201s and the 301 exhaust. This is the 201, this is the 301 I found out now. Um, obviously one's longer than the other. I want to use these because I think they look better. I think they're kitted nicer and also these have got ejector pin marks around the inside of them which I didn't notice when I put them together. So I would rather use these because I think they look nicer. They're longer, they look more blah, you know. Also not mentioned in the instructions, you get two types of tails. As you can see here, you've got this type of tail here with the fins front and rear. So that's that one with the fins front and back. You can see there. And then you get this type, which is the ordinary old-fashioned type. So that's the one I'm going to be using. So we can put those to one side. And this fin cap fits on the fin beautifully. Okay, so we can put that on there. And then a bit of Mr. Surfacer in the seam. Clean it out with a cotton bud and there's our panel line. So that's that. So I have decided that I want to do this one here. XH562. And the reason I've decided that is because I saw this picture... This book here, on target special V-bombers, okay, this is the one, this is the only reference I've got for, for Vulcans. Um, in here there is a picture of a Vulcan in full flight and it's got really dirty leaks and crap coming out of the undercarriage bay by the look of it. Um, and it's also very weathered and very dirty and I want to do it like that. It's only got one of the uh, plates between the engines but hey ho. So this, the story of this one is... Um, what must have been one of the audacious apps of all applied to the Vulcan B2 XH562 during its visit to Royal New Zealand Air Force Oakia, I guess that's how you say it. Uh, whilst the crew of the Vulcan were treated to a VAP trip to Rotora, ground crew at the base applied the Kiwi to the fuselage round door seen with a spectacular backdrop. The markings make an interesting alternative from the norm. Okay, so you can see, you can't see it very well on here, but there is a, there's a Kiwi in there. But... My concern is we've got this photograph here and we've clearly got the, the longer exhaust nozzles on there. And then if we go a bit further on in the book, you've got XH562, that's 505, 562, here we go. You can see the Kiwi in there now. Uh, so we've got the big bat emblem on there as well and it clearly shows it's having white undersides. It clearly shows it here as having the 201 exhaust, and here it looks like it's got the 301 exhaust. So I'm believing, because of this, because I've actually got photographic evidence, I'm going to go by this. And we've also got the fin. Now I can't see the top of the fin there, but let's just assume that it's going to be the right one. Um, I guess I could look for more pictures of 562. But anyway, so that's all I'm going to go for. And I've got that in my aftermarket decal set here which is from Air Deco. I don't even know if you can get them anymore, I've had these for years. Um, so there it is, XH562, but it's showing the underside as being grey. So, I don't know. Um, and there's also showing it as... What did I, I saw another difference, I can't, remember, I can't remember what it was now. Oh, it's showing it as having the uh, short exhaust as well. So, I'm going with the longer exhaust, I've got a photograph there that proves it, and then we can dirty up the bottom, and we can get it looking great, and we'll have that lovely kiwi wrangle on the front as well, rather than just the standard red so we'll have a lot of spare decals left over and there's the um there's the bat emblem that goes on the tail there and that's very sort of day glow so that looks good um i think as time went on they also added some other key little kiwis to it but that's not in the decal set so we're depicting it in 1972 okay so that's what's going to be um 
We've got this set here, which is all the, uh, the stencil data and everything, which we also get with the kit. This is the kit from the old Airfix, decal side from the old Airfix kit for XH558. So I won't be using those. Uh, but we've got these decals here, and then we've got the, we also got all the stencil decals in the Airfix kit. So these look a lot thinner than the Airfix decals. We've also got all the, you, you can have pretty much any, any squadron you want with this one. So, um, should look nice. So that's what I'm going to go for. So we're going for long exhaust. Turn them. And we're going for the plain fin capping. So that's it, XH562 it is. Okay, so here we are now with the uh, the, the model with the um, the fin fitted on already. I've gone round the, there with Mr. Surfacer and then a cotton bud with alcohol. I used alcohol rather than Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners because it takes longer to get it out and then you don't end up gouging all the, uh, all the material out. You can see there's a little bit more I need to do there. I don't know if the cotton bud's still wet. No, it's not. I'll come and do that later. So just looking now at what we can do. Obviously, we can't do any spraying because it's too bloody hot. So I'm going to start fitting the greeblies and the ones that won't get knocked off. I, I'm still undecided whether to have the air brakes open or closed. I think I'll probably have them closed because there's minimum detail in here. And also the actual air brakes themselves. Um, they're just like, as you can see, they're just like plastic. There's no detail to them at all, so I'll probably have them just closed. Um, anyway, so what I want to do is get these bits and pieces on. I'm looking at these these uh, vents underneath, which I don't know what they are. If anyone can tell me, I'd, be, I'd love to know, because the ones I can see that are in operation, they always seem to be extremely dirty coming out of these vents. So uh, these are going here and here. I've got the parts here on the sprues, so we can get on with that. But if I glue these on like this now, you're going to see like grey plastic up inside. So what I'm going to do, because I can't spray, I'm going to brush paint them. Wow, that's glued on. And I'm going to use um, Tamiya Lacquer Paints LP13. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just literally, roughly brush paint the area in here where the vent's going to go. And then or the duct, should I say. And then when you look up inside, you'll see the grey. We, we will get... Um, we will get white paint up in there when we spray underneath, and I will purposely spray white paint up in there. But I don't want to see light grey. I want it to be dark when you look up inside there, or if you sort of happen to catch it in your eye. I, mean, I know it's underneath, um, and a lot of people say, you know, what's the point? You're not going to see it. Well... What's the point in building a plastic model? You could ask yourself that question. So there we go. There we are, and then we'll do the same on the inside of the vents. Make the insides of these. As I say, it doesn't need to be perfect. just needs to be dark. If you notice I haven't gone for black because I don't want it to just be totally jet black up inside there. I want it to be I just want it to be dark. Now I'm going to say a couple of things. Somebody has commented, I think it was on part seven, about me making this into a dog's dinner. Um, don't appreciate comments like that and comments like that will actually mean I block you so that's what happens the person was telling me I'm building it all wrong I didn't use the paper templates um, and I noticed afterwards that apparently I should have glued the spars to the upper wing not the lower well I followed the instructions so <laughs> um, I don't appreciate comments like that and it w I will block anyone that makes comments like that and indeed, I will block anyone that pulls things like that on, on uh, other viewers as well, because I respect the people that follow me. So if someone comes on and starts telling that person that they're... Uh, I mean, if they're going to tell them they're wrong and disagree with them, then that's just a bit of debate. But if you're going to be uh, abusive, then I'll just block you, because I don't like it. So um, there we go, so that's that done, so now we can get them glued on. 
Okay, so we got those in now, <clears throat> all those. Make sure you get them in the right place because they are funny different shapes. I don't know if you can see it there in the light, but they are slightly different shapes, these, um, these larger ones here. So get them, make sure you get the numbers right. Um, so what I looked at them doing was putting the exhausts, but I'd rather spray the exhaust separately to check they're okay on all these seams and everything and they look good up inside. But obviously I can't do any spraying, so can't put them on. I'm not going to put any control surfaces in yet. I've got all the rudder and the flaps and everything here. I'm not going to put them in yet for fear of knocking them off because they will be quite flimsy. Um, so I was looking at the air brakes and I was, as I said I'm going to have them in the closed position. Now Airfix have done a great job here in the instructions. They've got them here labelled as part numbers but they've got one, two, three, four as you can see there. And on the back of the parts they have moulded in the numbers that they are. You can see there one and four. So that's pretty cool. Now when I put them in, if you put them in the wrong way, I did that the right way, if you put a piece of masking tape is really handy here for lifting them out, if you put them the wrong way they won't go. Okay so don't force it, just take it out, turn it round and put it in the right way. But the other thing I've noticed is it's sitting quite low so I'm going to take it out, Okay, put it on the bench the correct way round, put it here get the others out of the way, and then I'm going to grab a couple of bits of 10 thou shim, just 10 thou plastic card, or 025 millimeters for the metric ones amongst you. And then we can grab a drop of extra thin, just tap them in, just to get them glued in. Okay, and then we can put another drop on top of there, just like so. And then we can drop our number one into place, just like that. And as you can see, it is sitting now very slightly proud. Okay, so now we'll be able to sand it flush, get a nice flush look. Then we've got number two. That's number three. Number two is here. So number two, again, will only go in one way round. Okay, that's again sitting low. So I'm going to pull it up with a piece of masking tape, put it on the bench the correct way round. This time I'll put some extra thin in first. Just like so, and then we can drop a couple of bits of 10,000 shim into there, just like that. Drop of extra thin on top of the shims, and then drop our door in, just like that. Okay, so that's that in and all done. And when they're dry, they can be sanded. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see it in the picture, but they are just. They are just proud. Okay, so very like sanding on them and they'll come out lovely. They've also got sink marks behind them, I've just noticed. Oh god. I think I'll just sand those out. Right, and then this side I did notice I haven't tried number three. Number three doesn't go in that way, so we'll take it out and we'll put it in that way, and it doesn't go that way either. So Either I've got a bit of sprue nib left on there, or it's just too long. So we'll just take a little bit off its length. Now it's gone in. Try it the other way round. That's better. Okay, so that's correct. And that one's fitting lovely and flush. So we can just take that one out. Put it on the bench in the correct orientation, or hold it in our hand in the correct orientation. Make sure we've got some glue in it, we don't want to fall it out once it's all painted. And we can just plop that one in. What I'm going to do this time, I'm just going to touch it with a knife so I don't get any of the glue up under my finger. And then finally here we've got number four. That doesn't go in that way, so we'll take it out. It'll go in that way. And again, that one's lovely. So we don't need any packing under this side, only under that side. There's definitely something going on with my model because that, that left wing, the port wing, is shorter. And it looks like those hatches where these are going are shallower. Or deeper, sorry. 
but there we go, those, in, those are all in now. Lovely, give them a quick sand after they're dried and get them all nice and flush looking. On the underside, we've got the same thing again. I haven't even got them off the sprues yet and I haven't even found where in the instructions we're going to fit them. Uh, so I don't know which side's which. And it might be they've got numbers on them, one, two. No, they haven't. So we'll have to make sure we get them. Here we go. So number nine is going in this side. So this is number nine here. Get up the sprue nibs on that one. It's actually bad practice sanding over your model, guys. I'm only doing it because... We're on camera, so that's going to drop in there. Again, that is shallow. Just see if it goes in the other way. Yeah, and it's still shallow. So, a couple of bits of plastic card, ten thou thick. What we can do is drop some glue on there, or some glue on there. That one into there, that one into there, and then I'm going to put some more glue in because that glue dried out because it's so bloody hot. And then just drop that door straight in, just like that. Okay, then the next one is number 10. And if the top's anything to go by, this side should be fine. And it is very, very slightly shallow. It's got a funny moulding mark in it there. Yeah, I think because of that mark, I'm going to put some plastic shim under one side. And then I can sand it nice and flush after. Oh, look at that, I touched the bloody surface with the glue. Urgh. But as you can see, I'm not going to touch it, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to leave that and that will dry back on its own and it'll be absolutely fine. So we can just, in fact, I'm going to just glue this in now. Just like so, Dump. and then use the end of the knife just to push it down in. And then we've got it slightly raised on one side, and that will enable me to sand that glue mark out and staying away from these rivets and everything. So there we go, guys. I think we've done about as much as we can do. Um, got all these little bits and pieces to go on here. I think I'll get it all primed before I do any of that. Um, and obviously we've got our undercarriage over there. The air brakes we're not going to be having. We've got these here to go on, but I want to get all this, these bits here I'm talking about. I want to get all this sanded first. There's this piece here to go on the back. I guess we could fit that. We've got some flash on this, and that needs to be painted up inside first. But we'll just see how it fits on camera, and then I'll fit it off camera. We've got some flash around the sides of here. We've got a big mould seam. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there. I don't like the look of it, even if it is supposed to be there, I'm taking it off. It looks horrible. It looks like a mould seam, even if it isn't. Maybe I'll sand that away. Same on here. and just go over that corner. And then we'll see how it fits. Lovely. Lovely fit. Yeah, we'll need some Mr. Surfacer around it. Because <clears throat> as you can see there, there's a gap. And it's all moving around in there. But um, I want to paint it first. So I think what I'll do is I'll 
I'll put some Mr. Surfacer inside there, then glue on, then I can put some more Mr. Surfacer around the outside. So I'll get that done and then I'll come back. Right then guys, <clears throat> I've done that. Got the Mr. Surfacer around there. I've also put some around these just to make sure. Um, I've also had to put some more around here because that, sorry, off camera over here. I've also had to put some more around here because the um, because that shrunk back again. again. So, uh, we've got all this now to go on. So we've got the bombs which need to be painted. They're two colours of green. And then we've got the white rackings as well. So they've got to be done. Uh, refueling probe and tit on the front. They'll be fitted probably after primer um, before paint. I'm bound to knock that off. But um, I don't know. Let's see what I can do. Uh, we've got the obviously bomb bay doors. They've got to go on but they're not going to be going on until it's all done. We've got the ECM bit here, that's going to be going underneath, but that's got to be painted inside. We've got these two bits here, there's that one there and that one there. They've got to go on, but they need to be painted on the inside. Obviously the clear parts. And then we've got all the greeblies which have to go on after it's painted. I've got my exhausts here, which I want to sort out and paint before they go on, just to make sure they look good. We've got all the undercarriage here, which needs to be primed and painted before it goes on. So that's all there, ready to go. And then we've got our control surfaces, which will go on just before I prime it because I'm worried about breaking them off because they won't be because they'll be glued along a, a small area here and they won't be very strong. So we'll put them on afterwards. And then obviously we've got our sprues over here. We've got our ailerons <clears throat> here, and we've got the actuator covers there. And then we've got all our gear doors and the ladder and everything there. So a little bit more to do, but really stuck because. Everything that needs to go on needs to be painted. The whole thing needs to be primed and painted. And obviously we can't do that until all this is sunk back and sort itself out. So I'm not sure how long or short this video has been, but I'm going to call this a day for part 10. And then come back in a couple of days when the weather's cooled down and I can get some painting done. But as you can see, we're nearly there. We're, we're practically finished now. Um, the building side of things. And then we'll get all the gear doors painted and everything. My plan is to do the Bombay white, and I will probably spray it with Mr. Servicer to be on it because it's a nice silky sheen. And then I'm, I think I'm going to spray the underside. Let me go. Let me. Don't you think, guys? I think I'm going to spray the underside with this LP35, which is insignia white, because ordinary white here is just. I don't know. It's very, very bright. I might use this just to sort of take it down a touch. Um, and also because it's Tamiya Lacquer paint, it's awesome. Get it from Premium Hobbies. So don't forget, NMB10 is the code, and you can get 10% off everything you buy from there. So, there we are, guys. That's going to be it for part 10, I'm afraid. And you can blame this unusual English weather for me having to stop. I'm really annoyed. And if you're new to the hobby and you're wondering why I won't spray when it's hot, the reason is, the way an airbrush works, the air is blown past the needle okay around the front of the needle and it pulls through a venturi effect it pulls the paint out so the paint actually comes out of the airbrush as a very very fine mist okay and the thinner the paint the finer it will be so obviously in warmer weather you want to thin your paint if you're doing large areas of like this you want to thin your paint so i would probably go about 60 percent even 70 percent thinners and really have your paint flowing nicely Trouble is then you've got this very very fine mist with lots of solvent in it and it dries like that because it's so warm. So basically you're spraying, the paint is coming out of the end of the gut, out of the airbrush like this and by the time it gets to here it's dry. So you end up with this really powdery effect at best. At worst what you'll get is the paint will just start to come off because it's, it's instead of being painted it's almost like it's pebble dashed and, and, and you don't want that. You want to be able to go wet on wet and keep it wet. The other thing you'll find is when you spray, you'll end up with lots of dry lines <clears throat> in between where you're painting because you're you're spraying a fan which is say an inch wide, and then the quarter inch edges of that are the driest areas, so they dry first. So every time you go over, you end up spraying, you, you get a line of paint with two dry bands around it. So it's a nightmare. So um, it's the same reason I'm not doing any painting on the Land Rover because it's just too bloody hot. It's uh, same with you know all paints you, you spray them. As soon as, they, as soon as they hit the air, because the air is so warm, they dry and then what's the sticky mess that's left sticks on and doesn't flow out. Okay? If you ever find that problem and you end up with a very grainy finish, if you've used Tamiya paint or whatever, if you use Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners and just spray it on neat, 
okay don't flood it just spray it on neat as if you're lacquering it it will actually as it says it will level it out it will soften the surface and take it down so it's particularly like a problem when you're spraying in like around phantom air intakes you've got the the fuselage comes up the side here and you've got the, the slats on the side and you've got to try and get in there i suspect we'll have the same sort of issue here and when you when you get in there you get the the paint is is blowing into the corner and it's blowing the, the air is blowing back out and then going back in so you've got this dry paint getting blown back on so that's what's happening so there we go um so i'll see you when the weather's cooled down bye for now